Welcome to the course on construction technology. It is a course under Kerala Technical University and I am dealing with the fifth module regarding tall buildings. Myself Rahe Shari, Assistant Professor, Department of Civil Engineering from Rajagiri School of Engineering and Technology, Kakana. The topics that are discussed in this session include tall buildings, framed buildings with steel and concrete and formwork. Coming to the introduction, what is a tall building? Height is an important factor that decides the appearance, design, construction, etc. of any structure or building. It is highly difficult to define and there is no absolute definition of the term tall buildings by defining simply the height of the structure. When the term was originally used in the 1880s, it described a building of 10 to 20 floors but now it describes of at least 40 to 50 floors. Now a tall building or high rise building is defined as a multi-story structure between 35 to 100 meter tall for a building of unknown height from 12 to 39 floors. A skyscraper on the other hand is defined as a multi-story building whose architectural height is at least 100 meter and for buildings above a height of 300 meters, the term super tall can be used. And while skyscrapers reaching beyond 600 meters are classified as mega tall. As per the structural engineering view, high rise or tall building is defined as any vertical construction for which wind is a more significant load factor than earthquake or the self weight. Framed buildings. Framed building or framed structures are structures having the combination of beam, column and slab to resist the lateral and gravity loads. These structures are usually used to overcome the large moments developing due to the applied loading. Frame structures can be differentiated into rigid frame structures and braced frame structures. And rigid structures can be further classified into pinned end frames and fixed end frames. And braced frame structures can be subdivided into gabled frames and portal frames. And you can see one by one in detail. So the figure shows different types of frame structures. A rigid frame structures can be defined as the structures in which beams and columns are made monolithically and act together to resist the moments which are generated due to the applied load. This type of frame structures resist the shear, moment and torsion more effectively than any other type of frame structures. A pin end rigid frame system usually have pins as their support conditions. This frame structure is considered to be non-rigid if its support conditions are removed. In fixed ended structural frames, the end conditions are usually fixed as compared to the pin end rigid frame structure. Braced structural frames are defined as structures in which bracings are usually provided between beams and columns to increase their resistance against lateral forces and side sway forces due to applied load. Bracing is usually done by placing diagonal members between the beams and columns. This frame system provides more efficient resistance against earthquake and wind forces. This frame system is more effective than a rigid frame system. The gable frame structures usually have a peak at their top. These frames are in use when there are possibilities of heavy rain and snow. Portal structural frames usually look like a door and this frame system is very much in use for construction of industrial and commercial buildings. Components of a concrete framed structure. Horizontal members of this frame are called beams and vertical members are called columns. Slabs are large, thick, flat piece of concrete which are reinforced with steel rebars and typically square or rectangular in shape. 
Column is the most important as it is the primary load carrying element of tall buildings. If the beam or slab in a building gets damaged, this will affect only one floor. But damaged to a column could bring down the entire building. Other important components of concrete frame structures include shear wall, elevator shaft, walls in concrete frame buildings and cladding of concrete frame structures. And you can see one by one in detail. The figure shows the different components of concrete frame structure. In the figure you can see the beams, the columns, the slab, the shear walls and the lift wells. Shear walls are important structural elements in a high rise building. Shear walls are essentially very large columns making them appear like walls rather than columns. Their function in a building is to help to take care of horizontal forces on the building like wind and earthquake loads. Normally buildings are subject to vertical loads and gravity. It is important to understand that only work for horizontal loads in one direction and the axis of long dimension of the wall. These are usually not required in low rise structures. Then elevator shafts are vertical boxes in which elevators move up and down. Normally each elevator is enclosed in its own concrete box. These shafts are also very good structural elements which helps in resisting horizontal loads and also carrying vertical loads. Concrete frame structures are strong and economical and hence almost all raw materials can be used in these structures. The heavier the option include masonry wall, brick, concrete block or stone. The lighter options include drywall partitions made of light steel or wood covered with sheeting boards. The heavier options which are used for construction of masonry are strong, secure and soundproof and the lighter options are quick, flexible and lightweight in nature. The concrete frame building can be clad with any kind of cladding material. Common cladding materials include glass, aluminium panels, stone sheets and ceramic facades. Since these structures can be designed for heavy loading, one could even clad them in solid masonry walls of brick or stone. Steel frame structures. Steel has high strength to weight ratio of any construction material. Steel can accomplish extremely long spans in structures and very often pay footprints without intermediate columns. The immense strength of steel is of great advantage to buildings. The other important feature of steel framing is its flexibility and it can bend without cracking which is another great advantage as a building can flex when it is pushed to side by wind or an earthquake. The third characteristic of steel is its plasticity and ductility. This means that when it is subjected to a great force, it will not suddenly crack like glass but slowly bend out of shape and this property allows steel buildings to bend out of shape and deform thus giving warning to the inhabitants to escape. The failure in steel frames are not sudden and a steel structure rarely collapses. Steel in most cases perform better in earthquake than most other materials due to these properties. There are several types of steel building construction as follows. Conventional steel construction, bolted steel construction and light gauge steel construction. Conventional steel fabrication is the process of cutting steel members to the correct lengths and weld them together to make the final structure. This can be done entirely at the construction site which is labor intensive or partially in a workshop to provide better working conditions and reduce time. Bolted steel construction occurs when steel fabricators produce finished and painted steel components which are then shipped to the site and simply bolted in place. This is preferred method of steel construction as the bulk of the fabrication can be done in workshops with right machinery, lighting and working conditions. 
Light gauge steel construction is a type of construction that is common for residential and small buildings in North America and some parts of Europe. It is similar to wood framed construction except that light gauge steel members are used in place of wood. Next topic for discussion is form work. Form work is defined as the temporary arrangement which is provided to support the wet concrete till it attains the strength. Form work actually determines the geometry, the shape, the size and finish of the concrete. And a good form work should satisfy some requirements. It should be strong enough to support the weight of the fresh concrete during placing and compacting and should also be strong enough to withstand all types of dead loads and light loads. The material of the formwork should be cheap, easily available and should be suitable for reuse. And it should be lightweight as much as possible. The material of formwork should not warp or get distorted when exposed to elements. And also it can be easily erected and dismantled and it should be sufficiently stable in all the weather conditions. It should also conform to appropriate safety regulations and the joints in the formwork should be tight against leakage of cement grout. The different types of materials that can be used for making a formwork include plywood, timber, steel, aluminium and plastics. Construction of formwork. The following processes are carried out in the construction of any formwork. First one is propping and centering. The props used for centering may be of steel, timber or valleys. Pillars may be made up of brick masonry in mud mortar and are also sometimes used as props. Shuttering. Shuttering can be made up of timber planks or it may be in the form of panels and made by fixing plywood or timber frames or by welding steel plates to the anchor framing. And provision of camber. A certain amount of deflection in the structure is unavoidable. So it is therefore desirable to give an upward camber in the horizontal member of the concrete structure to counteract the effect of deflection. Cleaning and surface treatment. Before laying concrete, the formwork should be cleaned of all the rubbish, particularly the sawdust and chippings. Before laying the concrete, the face of the formwork in contact with concrete shall be cleaned and treated with release agents like oil or soft soap solution to prevent the concrete getting stuck to the formwork. Types of formwork There are different types of formwork available for different purposes. Generally, the formworks for vertical concreting are called wall forms and those for horizontal concreting are called slab or floor form. The various types of formwork available today in the market are classified as traditional formwork, climbing formwork, sliding formwork, permanent formwork and subspecial formworks. In traditional formwork, it consists usually of standard framed panels tied together over their back with horizontal members called walling. Walling is provided with basic function of resisting the horizontal force of the wet concrete. The steel reinforcement cage is placed and positioned before the other side of the formwork is directed and fixed. Climbing formwork. The method of casting walls consists of a climbing formwork and the climbing of which may be by manual or crane assisted. It employs a common set of forms used in a repetitive manner for casting walls in vertical lifts. Sliding formwork or slip forming. Slip forms or climbing forms are defined as formwork in concrete construction in which the forms are raised while the concrete is in a plastic state and such forms are sometimes called as sliding forms. Permanent form or stain place formwork is one in which the form is left as an integral part of the structure. Permanent formwork can be utilized as the facing material of in situ reinforced concrete. 
and special form. These are forms that are specially designed and manufactured for a particular kind of construction. The need for a special formwork may arise due to the highest class of dimensional tolerance is to be followed during construction and when the formwork shape require becomes uneconomical and impracticable for site fabrication and it includes table formwork and tile formwork. Table form is a special formwork designed for use in casting large repetitive floor slabs in medium to high rise structures. The main objective of reducing the time required for re-erecting, striking and re-erecting slab formwork. Tunnel formwork is a room sized structural steel fabricated form which is used to cast the RCC walls and floor slabs of a building as a monolithic structure and a continuous pole. The forms are then heated using hot air blowers for accelerated curing of the concrete. 